you, you wrote a great article about why the yuppie elite dismissed Bitcoin. And this could be, I guess, either boomers or younger people that are in the top business schools in the world, work on Wall Street, work in management consulting. What's the synopsis of, of, of that article that you wrote? Yeah, I wrote that a few years ago, um, and it resonated with a, a lot of people. I, I wasn't expecting it to, to do that. I, I was just sort of venting about my personal experience. And it turns out a lot of people have this experience of trying to talk to their smart friends about Bitcoin. And, and the smart friends in particular are uninterested. Um, and, you know, there's memes that have been made about, like, the, the smartest people like Bitcoin the dumbest people like Bitcoin and the midwits are the ones that dislike Bitcoin. But I went to Stanford and I was around some of the smartest people um, I've ever met and they're not interested in Bitcoin. So, uh, you know, I, I was trying to figure out for myself, what, what is the driver here? And I finally came up with, um, you know, it's, it's in part related to how smart you are. Um, but I think the bigger driver is how much trust you have in the system. Because I was finding that, you know, to, to be a Stanford MBA, to be an MBA, to be a professional of any kind, a lawyer, doctor, you have to have faith in the system, have faith that if you just get through these hoops um, and, and, you know, you're a, a good actor, you... you uh, plug in and are a good worker um, that you'll be rewarded and and then they are rewarded and so you um, believe that the system works uh, and so I found that the successful folks that I knew um, were most uninterested in Bitcoin and then when I was looking around in Bitcoin I found that you know these people were smart but they were very cynical, very skeptical about the system, about politics, about um, government, about you know the incentives at the heart of uh, institutions, and that you know created a two by two matrix for me as a as a management consultant. You often do that. Um, of you know one axis is is. Uh, intelligence and the other is trust in the system and in the two top corners there's the yuppie elite as i call them the professionals who are high trust in the system and, and high intelligence and then in the other top corner there's um the bitcoiners who are high intelligence and very low trust in the system um and i think that that explains why you know a lot of people listening to this will they everyone has had that talk with some friend where you know they're a super smart person and they just don't see bitcoin as as viable or valid uh and it's so frustrating you, you can't figure out why and i think it's because you know when you have been when you have found success as a part of the system you are incentivized to see things through that lens and it becomes, and, and you have trust in the system, so you can't, you can't conceive of, you can't see the value of something that is inherently outside of the system or counter to the system. And that's what Bitcoin is. So um, I think that's why it resonated with so many people is it sort of put a, a mental model to this strange phenomenon of like the smartest people in our lives don't get Bitcoin but it's because they are the doctors and lawyers who have invested so much in the system. And Bitcoin is a, in, it requires them to question that. And that's just a hard sell. Yeah, this was a really interesting article when I first read it because I remember originally like diving deep into Bitcoin in, in 2017 and 2018, reading like the Nakamoto Institute from Pierre Richard and, and Bitstein and, you know, looking at the website and being like, oh, this is like some random weird blog, but reading the articles and thinking, oh, like this actually makes a lot of logical sense. Like 
this is interesting. And then I remember trying to like read anything possible as to, you know, why this could be wrong or this could not work. And I couldn't really combine, find a, a really convincing argument. And then, so, so I was like, ah, I'm just some random guy. Like, how could I have figured this out before, you know, people that are much more intelligent than even I am. And, and your article explained it to where, oh, actually, it makes a lot of sense that these people wouldn't get it. You kind of, really, to get Bitcoin, you kind of have to have this very unique bias as to, like, how you perceive the world. And that enables you to, like, grasp Bitcoin fairly quickly. And then the other people that are maybe very intelligent takes them a little bit longer, a lot more touches. Or, like you said, they have to lose more faith in the system, which I kind of feel like over the past two years has kind of been happening where, you know, whether it's things like COVID or, or, or other, you know, geopolitical events going on, people are losing more and more faith in the larger institutions that are all throughout the world. And maybe that's a trend that will continue as Bitcoin continues to rise. Yeah, I think, I think you're right. I think it will. And I think it, speak, it speaks to that point you, you made there of like, people often refer to Bitcoin as like an intelligence test and and it's it's not that it's a it's a question of how much time you have spent you know thinking about it or being exposed to how it could work um it's not that hard to get and so it doesn't really require you to be all that smart or all that uh you know deep in economics in fact um the more you have already learned about economics, the more you have to unlearn before you can start getting Bitcoin. Um, so I think it, you know, I think it, one of the things that, that people get hung up on is that same question of like, okay, Bitcoin seems incredible, but like, what am I missing? Why am I, how am I getting hoodwinked? Because surely there are smarter people that have figured this out first. And when I look around at my smart friends, they're not interested in Bitcoin. So how am I getting hoodwinked? And yet it's this, you know, I think the reality is is that this, the smart people in your life in your life have not spent the time considering how Bitcoin could be right. Um, because they dismiss it right away, um, to their detriment. Yeah. I think that was another really telling aspect of it all for me, listening to, as I you know, d- dove deeper into what Bitcoin is, trying to understand it from maybe an economics perspective and also from a technical perspective, hearing that very smart people speak about it on CNBC or Bloomberg, and then re- realizing that like, they don't even really know what they're talking about necessarily. Like some things that like they don't even understand like the very basics of how Bitcoin actually works. How can they actually have a pretty like informed opinion on what's going to happen to this over the next five to 10 years? Like they barely even understand it. And it's like you said, they just don't really care. They just immediately have dismissed it to begin with. And that's why that's, that's the opportunity, right? I mean, that's, that's it. 